Well, hello, everyone, and good evening. Tamer, how you doing, hello, buddy? Howdy. How you doing? I'm doing well today. Very Sun good, is uh, starting to pop out here. Yeah, well, it seems to have gone away now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was out for a Small bit, window. So. Small what window of goodness there. Uh, welcome to the Three Beer Pod. It is episode number seven. I'm Chris. That is Tim. And uh, here for the next little bit. And our guest tonight will be TSN's James Duffy. I'll tell you, Timmer, I uh, talked to James by email this week and uh, arranged it. He said it's all good. And uh, then we just hope that they show up. Yeah, I'm yeah. Looking forward to it. So for sure, we'll be good. We'll see James, if you dude, us. looking forward to it. This is an exciting one for us today. Well, let's start off with uh, the elephant in the room. A new oh, haircut, Timmer. Oh, buddy, check it out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Had enough. Had to had to get her tightened up. Not going to lie. Uh, used to get my haircut like every two weeks. The old clean cut barber shop on uh, Queen Street, Chatham, Ontario. Uh, <laughs> this is my barber, but uh, haven't been able to get there. So I went for the second best barber in town, my wife. Wow, and yeah. she she did a pretty good job there. I uh, yeah, she did. I was nervous. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, a lot of nerves going on there. <laughs> I don't have a lot of good things going for me, but a full head of hair is one of them. And uh, a little uh, Canadian tire uh, hair trimmers, and uh, a wife who said that she could do it, and she pulled it off. I yeah. I, I, I was flying high yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> flying high. With getting a haircut, I'm so pumped. I'm mean, flying high with these. You know, can't see them here. But I got like wings coming out the side oh, now. Boy. It's really starting yeah. to get. It's really I, starting I, to get I bad. Do a door, a porch drop off of my clippers, and then oh. uh, see what you can do, bud. Very nice. Well, we should uh, start with her. Has a sponsor tonight with the uh, three beer pod, the Health House, who's also <laughs> adding uh, salon work here now. <laughs> well, she's. A, I told her every two weeks now. Uh, she was not. Uh, not really excited about that, but we're going to push for it. I might go every week now just to keep her tight. <laughs> keep her tight, eh? What else do we got to do? Uh, let's uh, say thank you to our other sponsor. That is me. Chris McLeod. Over Thanks for coming out. Connect. Very nice. If Great you uh, like to buy or sell, I can certainly help you out with that. Let's start off tonight uh, as we wait for our guest. Uh, James is going to join us here in a couple minutes. What you drinking, bud? What you having tonight, Timmer, on the Three Beer oh, Pod? Oh, buddy. Uh, buddy, uh, Darren Ebear. Drop this bad boy off here. It, oh, let me not cut. Oh, there we go. Paper salesman from uh, Dominion City in Ottawa. Uh, we've highlighted them before with the Sun Split, which is my favorite beer. But uh, Paper Salesman is is delicious. Uh, it says on right on the can, hoppy, not bitter. And uh, this one, I, you would love this one, I think, McLeod. It's got all the things that you like, just not that bitterness that kind of scares you. <laughs> yeah, I'd go this with that. Delicious beer. So thanks to Darren Ebear for online ordering that and dropping me off one. Beauty, beauty. I'm having the Nordic Pale Ale from Kissmeyer, the Kissmeyer Nordic Pale Ale from Bose. Oh, Bose. Very nice. Love Bose. I got a Bose for later. Yeah. I put that in the fridge about seven minutes ago. And I asked my son to uh, grab me the beer that's cold in the fridge, and that's what he brought me. Right, so I, have, I have two of them, and the, the warm one he brought me. So, but okay. hey, so definition of cold is different. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's learning, homeschooled. Uh, that a boy. Uh, what you drinking, bud? Here tonight on the pot. I do have a lot of things here for the beer buzz tonight. That's good, man. What's mm. going on in the world of beer? Let's see what we got going on. Uh, the speaking moistly beer is now right. a thing. The speaking uh -huh. moistly. Oh, speaking moistly. Yeah, good. All Remember? right. Trudeau saying yeah, I do, yeah. Mostly. I do, I do. I'm not sure if I'm going to be running for that. Who's putting that out? That's Stray Dog Brewing up in, oh, uh, nice. in Ottawa. In so, Ottawa, yeah. Stray Dog, great brewery. Yeah. Stray Dog Brewing uh, revealed a new beer called Moist, Moistly Mosaic, inspired by the Prime Minister's notorious comment. Uh, it's already sold out. 3,100 wow. initial release sold out in 72 hours. Wow. I'm not, I, I'm not sure about that one. Well, just, obviously people wanted to try it, but I'm not sure if I want to. Moistly yeah. beer. Speak moistly. The moistly mosaic. Uh, they said, obviously, it caught the attention of a lot of people, obviously, right now with uh, the prime minister's comments. So there you go. Uh, Steam Whistle says restrictions related to the COVID-19 pandemic have led to a decline in bottle returns. So Steam Whistle is looking for some returns. So if yeah. you've got some Steam Whistle, they, they've got those green bottles. Right? Yeah, that's a tough one. It's the green bottle. That's uh, It stands out uh, when, you, when you see Steam Whistle on the shelf, but uh, they are uh, having a hard time getting them back. So that, that's not good. 
Yeah, so if you got some steam whistle, they want it back. If you're in the, the Toronto area, they say just drop it off right there. <laughs> just, <laughs> just drop it off at the front door. I will tell you, there is nothing better than an ice cold steam whistle fresh oh. from the brewery. So if there's yep. some sort of like, I bring my empty green bottles back and I get the freshest ones off the line, I'd go for that in a heartbeat. Yeah, they're desperate right now. They said they've already used their newest, uh, their their new. So obviously, they buy new bottles. Uh, right. They've already used their year's worth because they're waiting for those returns to come back. So, wow. uh, if you got steam whistle bottles, bring them back asap. And uh, one last story here on Beer Buzz because James is standing by. Nice. Uh, Mexicans are. This isn't funny. Mexicans are dying <laughs> from drinking uh, liquor that's not uh, from the breweries down there because they've banned alcohol. Uh, right. So yeah, yeah, so they're drinking. Um, alcohol that, that's made at home basically uh some some home brew stew and uh and there's having people pass away so that's uh, that. that is a uh that was a fear when they were talking about closing stuff down and people wondered why they were keeping a uh, beer store and lcbo open and that was because people would start making their own and uh it's not good if you start making your own without having any experience at all <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a risk I don't want to take. Uh, all right, let's pull in our guest here tonight on uh, on the Three Beer Pod. It is episode number seven. It is James Duthie from TSN. James, how you doing, buddy? Good, boys. How are you? Excellent. Very good. Very good. Really appreciate you joining us here tonight. No problem. We, uh, we, we laugh uh, every time. This is what, Tim, episode seven, right? This is episode seven, yeah. So we, we talked to breweries, James, and we've talked to Marty Turco owns a brewery down our way. So we talked right. to Marty. Uh, Joe Siddle works in the Jays broadcast. Uh, Joe's down this way, and he's just a good bud. So we had him on. And when we get these guys like yourself and Joe and Marty and guys that uh, you know aren't just yeah, professional owners. athletes and uh, yeah. <laughs> elite athletes, all of us. There's always a fear that you're not going to show up, and we're just going to sit here and ramble on for half an hour. Yeah. So appreciate it, buddy. Uh, no worries. Awesome. Uh, James Duffy from TSN. James, we've we've been talking on. Uh, on the radio show for like 13, 14 years now, I've, I've been uh, calling you every now and then and we, we talk hockey. And I, I think our first conversation revolved a lot around Maggie, the monkey. I think that was our first conversation. I'm wow. surprised you still answer my emails. <laughs> that was that long ago. eh? Yeah. It's been a while. It's yeah. A while. Old, I don't know. She's, she's probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta oh, think, right. Uh, uh, we lived for a uh, long time, but uh, <laughs> time. Wow. Tim, do you remember that they had Maggie the monkey come on and make uh, playoff picks? And yeah, hundred percent. The, the early days of uh, the NHL on TSN when that existed. So I became host of that in two thousand and two, two thousand three season, I guess. And uh, they, I don't know how much you guys remember, but they wanted to be revolutionary. And <laughs> the first, like the monkey came on, I don't know, maybe the third season. But the first season, we had rock bands in there every night. Yes. Uh, we had these puppets that opened the show that were horror awful. <laughs> now, mind you, it wasn't like a terrible idea. Well, it was a bad idea, but you know, they had to be like politically correct, right? Because you're an NHL rights holder, so they couldn't really be funny. You can't be funny when you're trying to, when you can't be cutting. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was it was that that those are crazy times. Sometimes I look back <laughs> at those tapes. I wore like mock turtlenecks. I don't know why yeah. the hell they thought that was that was. Like hip, yeah, let's put him in a mock turtleneck and a jacket. That'll get <laughs> yeah. the kids. Yeah, that'll <laughs> bring them in. I love those. I love looking back at those old videos and seeing uh, the bad decisions of oh, of years so past. So Television's so hard too because those things live forever, right? Yeah, exactly. They keep pulling back in. Yeah, Jay's gonna bounce around here a little bit. I I, I want to ask. Obviously, you're doing a lot of your. Your, your stuff from home right now. Are, now, are we looking at your, your studio? Is this the, the look that you get on yeah, TSN every night? Is this is basically it. And it's all, you know, this is my our home office. I don't have much of like a man cave or anything. My wife is too much into like the in-style magazines and stuff. <laughs> so I actually, like all you had was like the plants and stuff you see back there. So I brought a couple of footballs up to make it look somewhat sporty. <laughs> And then I piled a bunch of books here on this desk, which is mm -hmm. usually a complete and utter mess. But <laughs> there's really nothing in here. Usually my dog comes scratching at the door halfway through the time. But That's so uh, funny. It's, yeah, it's well, not exactly the best backdrop. But this is where I spend more time than I thought I would. I was telling my wife the other day, I feel like I'm busier than when there was actually sports. Yeah. Yeah. We're, I, I was going to ask, because look at my – I'm. I got kicked out of the house. I'm in the. <laughs> I'm in my storage room for the podcast. You got kicked out of the house. For the I should pull that off. I don't know if the bosses would like it for like insider trading or something, but. Well, that's what I was going to ask. What if Pierre LeBron is like, "Yeah, guys, here we go," and and he's sitting in a storage room. Is that is that 
is that going to pass the? Uh, no, the I, I mean, I think they, uh, they've tried to do the producers. I think when we started this whole thing, tried to make everything. Now, some people are in condos downtown, so you can tell <laughs> the ones that are in a tiny little corner of the room. Um, so they've tried to make them all reasonable, but uh, it's more the outfits, right? Like we, we, they ask us to wear dress shirts and jackets. And I had an argument with uh, my boss, Kenny, at the beginning of this thing. I'm like, where everybody knows we're in our sweatpants. <laughs> like, who are we trying to kid? But I get it, right? They want the decorum to be held up, at least in something like insider training. You can't have Bob McKenzie in a tank top or something. But, <laughs> well, but yeah. That would be pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. It would be making the margaritas in yeah, the tank top would be pretty cr- darn good. Crushing margaritas in a, in a wife beater? That, that's insider <laughs> trading right there. That would be fantastic. That's hilarious good stuff. Uh, James, I feel like, uh, like I said, we talked to the radio show. Like if you ever ran into me on the street, we would never have talked to each other, but we've talked over the years mm-hmm. and I listen to your podcast all the time now. So I feel like I know a lot of things. So right. if I get fangirling and creepy out, just. No, that's okay. That's, that's, that's my, my fault for doing that. I've, ex- <laughs> I did not, when I started that podcast, I don't three years ago, or whatever, I did not intend to, you know, have my wife as a re- recurring character and disclose all small things in my life that I would never <laughs> disclose. But I think what happens is the guys I'm with, I'm just so comfortable with it. It really does feel like you're just hanging out talking with your guys. And then you realize you kind of forget. And it's not like it we're a TSN type audience either, but uh, I will do run into people or people will send me emails or something. And I go, Oh God, did I really say that? On the <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. The, uh, the rubber boots pod, if you're looking for it, it is, uh, it is good stuff. Three years now. Is that, like you said, you just started it. And is it something you just, is it like just a fun thing to do? Yeah. Or like you're 100%. not contractually like, obligated? You know what? Like Puffy, who's a character on the podcast, is a guy I work with. And he's one of the producers, never gets on camera. And, uh, you know, he's just, he, he amused me nonstop sitting in the studio with his little hypotheticals every night. He'd come in and say, you know, something ridiculous. Like for, you know, $10 million, would you guys do yet this, this and that? And I said... Oh man, I, I got to get him somehow involved on the air. And Lester's a musician who uh, super talented, and, and Christoph's just this great producer. And so uh, we just really had no idea what we were doing. I, I'm really, I was behind the times with podcasts. I didn't really even know. I think when I first went on Jay and Dan's maybe seven, eight years ago, I didn't even know what the hell it was. I had no <laughs> idea what was going on. So, but it's fun. And it's, uh, yeah, it, it's nothing more than that. Uh, we get in trouble with the bosses sometimes because I do have to keep up you know, a decorum of being this yeah. professional broadcaster. So I try to separate podcast self from, and I, I try not to cross the line. I'll let the guys like Puffy cross the line most of the time. But uh, yeah, I do share more than I thought I'd share. What, uh, what, do, what do you think about hockey? Are we going to get hockey back again? Or there's, there's been a lot of talk, especially here in the last week or so. What, I don't want to get all serious here, but what, what do you think is going on with, uh, with hockey? I have always been on the the very skeptical side, Chris. Like from the beginning, I we had, I had a bet actually with Frank Saravalli, one of our uh, one of our guys, and he said it was coming back from the beginning, and I didn't think it was. I just thought there was too many hurdles to overcome, and that still may be the case. Although, you know, the the optimism uh, that they have, and the, Gary Bettman is a very determined man, and there's so much money at play that I think that they will do whatever they can to make it happen. And so it may not happen till you know, late August or something. I could see the cup being handed out in October wow. uh, if, if they do this. But uh, I, I, I'm not giving you a great answer. I've always been on the no side, but over the last couple of weeks, I've started to think, okay, they're really pushing for this. So uh, they're probably going to try to make it happen. And you've seen some sports, soccer in Germany and such come back. I just still think there's a lot of logistical hurdles to get over. And the testing is, is the biggest thing. I still don't quite understand. So let's say, you know, let's say Toronto or Edmonton is one of these hubs where all the teams go to play. Okay. So I get that, you know, the players will be quarantined in the hotel and they'll only go from the hotel to the rink and you'll have this little biosphere type situation, but how do they, there's just so many little things to get around. Like, so if you're working as a, you know, on the cleaning staff at the hotel, you have to be quarantined too. You have to leave your family for two months and, you know, making minimum wage. Yeah. How do they, you know, maybe they're bringing in their own staff for everything, but there's all these little things that just make it really 
you know, it's logistically difficult to pull off. But again, they seem determined. But I think, you know, Bill Daly has said this. Testing is the number one thing. You've got to get to a point where you can test almost every day and you get the results in 20 minutes or a half an hour and it doesn't affect the public health system, these tests, yeah, right? Yeah. There's got to be enough for everybody that matters. And then, you know, so hockey players can go, uh, the, the NHL can buy their own. But I don't think we're at that stage just yet. I think it'd be weird if these teams come come back in, in August or whatever it is, and, and then they lose in the first round of the playoffs. Like, they work that hard to come all the way back. They're quarantined for two weeks. They play a week and a half. They're done. I was like, all right, well, well that was I a lot of I think there's a lot of guys, uh, personally, I, I have talked to guy, I'm playing golf with a guy who I won't say who, but he's in one of the seven teams not going to be there, and he's pretty <laughs> happy about it. Right. Because he's, he's already in full golf mode. It's the off season, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think you're right. I mean, look it. They all want to win the Stanley Cup. But if you're, say, Montreal or something, Chicago, one of those teams right yeah. at the bottom just sneaking in, I don't know. I guess anything could happen. And you know what's funny is they're, they're considering all sorts of scenarios right now. They seem to have locked into this 24 teams thing, right? Yep. Where they're still going to – the goal is to still have a 16-team playoff as per normal where they play the best of sevens, maybe the first round's the best of five. But they're going to start with 24 and knock eight teams out before they start. And so right now you have like Pittsburgh against uh, Chicago or something like that. If they if they just went one to twenty four, uh, Montreal and Edmonton or vice versa, one of those things. So there, I know that the GMs of those teams are saying, "Come on, we can't play a best of five or a best of three against a team that we were twenty points up on in the standings." And so they're contemplating everything, including things like giving the teams a one game lead. So if you play a best wow. of five. You know, the Oilers or the Penguins in those situations that I talked about would already be up one to nothing. I mean, it feels hokey and a little bit weird, but they're they're really trying to figure out a way that would be fair for competitive balance. And and I get that. I I, I just think that it's going to be so weird. I, I want to see it. Look, I want to see it for our business. I want to see it so fans have something to watch. So I'm not cheering against it in, in any way. I really want this to happen. But I just... I mean, I don't. It's it's just not going to seem, you know, the way that we we love our hockey in the spring, right? You know what's going to happen? The Leafs are going to win the cup. It's going to be <laughs> the Leafs win the cup. It's going to be an asterisk. Big asterisk. Both sides. And they won't be able to have a parade. Do like, you both cheer for the Leafs? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a Canadian. I'm a Canadian fan. Okay, so I asked this on my podcast actually. So in that scenario, would you take your Leafs or your Habs winning the Stanley Cup in this? crazy goofy scenario yep. or what if i give you a 50 50 a garrett so i'm going to guarantee you're going to win the cup or i'm going to say 50 50 shot you're going to win the cup over the next five years under normal conditions where you can have a parade and go to the bars and celebrate with your friends what are you taking oh boy i think you take it now you take well, it now. And, and most of the guys you see i'm not a big fan anymore of any team but everybody would say that but I just think so much of the experience yeah. don't you think is gathering with For your sure. buddies and having beer and if you for sure I, I know it would still mean something, but it would just it would always have that little asterisk beside it, and you wouldn't get the yeah. parade and everything else. And I'm not sure it would be, you know, well, as great as it, no. it, it would definitely it would definitely be something. Um, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a Spitfires fan. They got beat out in the first round three years ago, right? And they ended up winning the Memorial mm -hmm. Cup. That's that's very similar, very similar. And there's still a lot of people that say, "Well, you know, they had they had a month and a half to to prepare for it to come back and play." So there's there's that. But who lot. cares, right? It's a Memorial yeah. Cup. You still you still want it. And... Didn't care that. I get that. I that. I get that. Yeah. Tim, what were you gonna say, buddy? Sorry. No, I just had, I just had a question. You you just said you you know you're not a follower of maybe a hockey team now, but you've been to these major events, these major sporting events, the the Stanley Cup Finals, the the Super Bowl, the Masters. Um, what what's the memory that stands out the most of being at one of those events? Like the, for me, an everyday sports guy, I, I have my things that I've been to. I, I was at Mario's return game. Uh, you know, I was at the 2006 Megaly Ordonia's walk off home run game. Those right. things are easy to stick out because I don't have a lot of big events like that in uh, in my sporting memories. What's the one that stands out for you, James? Uh, well, number one is always going to be the 2010 gold medal game yeah. um, with with Sid. And, you know, the Olympics were always a big deal to me when I was uh, young and to get a chance to host that. And we were only about, I was probably 30 feet away from the goal. We had this wow. cool little retractable set that was right behind the Zamboni entrance. And to see that happen, 
I, I don't think anything will will ever yeah. top that. But I sort of have a you know a bunch of others I'll name quickly. You know the Raptors run last year, which I was got to be a part of, was was really special. Yeah. Um, just out of pure shock content, the 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 Patriots coming back over the Falcons wow. in that Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, when it was twenty eight three. Um, one that uh, one that really sticks out in my mind early in my career, my first year at TSN was the Vince Carter Slam Dunk Contest in Oakland. Yeah where uh, I was hosting that for TSN and just the atmosphere in that building for something that was a made for TV event that didn't involve a championship. I, I've rarely seen an electricity in a building yeah. like that. Like people were just jumping over their chairs and going crazy because <laughs> he was doing things that no one had ever seen before. And then I will say uh, Tiger last year at the masters yeah. uh, was also incredibly special. The masters is always great as you say, but that one, you know, to be there for that was uh, that was right up there. That's you awesome. mentioned golf. You're golfing tomorrow. Have you been out yet, or is this your first? Yeah, I golfed this morning. My second <laughs> round. The difficulty I find this year is, you know, the rest of the family's kind of stuck here. My son wants to golf, but he's got a job, and and uh, my two daughters and my wife. So the guilt that comes with golf is a lot uh, stronger than it is when you're leaving them at home. And yeah. but uh, that won't stop me. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> Doing my first round tomorrow. Is it, is it like completely different? What, what's the big change? It was so great. Honestly, yeah. like it was so great. <laughs> Saturday was my first one. It was sunny. And uh, just to be out walking again, I didn't play particularly well, but uh, oops, I lost you there for a second. Um, it was just so nice to be out and I, I, it works great. You know what we, at our course, you can you have you can't be there more than half an hour before the round. They only have four spots on the range, so basically one group at a time on the range, yeah. all spread out. Uh, you walk to the the tee. Uh, they spread out the groups a little bit more, but not too much. And they have those little pin caddies, so when your ball goes in the hole, you just clip it up. And besides that, it's totally normal golf, and uh, I think it's worked fantastic so far. I haven't seen anybody misbehaving. Uh, it's yeah. it's been really good. You can't. You know, there's no beer carts, which is a problem. But besides that, we're doing okay. Yeah. No, beer cart. yeah. no beer carts out there for sure. Uh, <laughs> James, this is the three beer pod, and it can mean one of one of two things. It means that we each drink three beers, which yeah. makes for a long Tuesday, or it means that each of us are having a beer and, and right. we're, we're, we're shooting the shit here. Uh, are you drinking today? You having a beer tonight? Or are you? Uh, you know what? My, my wife just gave me the, uh, about a half an hour ago, they're just in there making dinner, my wife and my son, and. Uh, we're apparently out of alcohol. We did the big, uh, the big, you know, maybe wow. two weeks into the whole thing, we did the the big yeah. LCBO trip, and I, my bill was like four hundred and twenty bucks. Oh. And we just last night drank the last bottle of wine, and so I don't think we have one piece. This is a dry household right Whoa. now, which is extremely Whoa. depressing. So we're making a trip tomorrow. The pandemic has hit hard. The pandemic has hit hard. You mentioned golf. Um, watched your Mike Weir birthday Zoom party. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. What that was pretty wild, and Mike had no idea. So no idea. Uh, maybe explain explain how it all came together and what was it all about. Well, it's first of all, we did a hockey one um, about two weeks ago. We had all the hockey commentators on on a podcast. It was really cool to see everybody. We had like twenty guys on chirping each other, and I came off that call. And I said that was really fun. We should do more of these. And so I called Bob Weeks and I said, let's do a golf one. And just get as many PGA Tour guys as we can, all the Canadian guys, but maybe we can get some other guys as well. And it was Weeksy who said that it was Mike's 50th birthday, so why don't we do that? And uh, so basically, we contacted Mike's brother, Jim, who we're friends with, and said, okay, who would Mike like to have on this thing? You know, kind of like a surprise party. And we got all the Canadian guys. Weeksy uh, did most of that. Uh, I got the hockey guys. Uh, you know, he's always admired Gretz. He was a huge fan of Eiserman. Uh, Adam Oates was another good buddy of his. Wow. So, and then, and the, but Jack Nicholas was the topper. And yeah. we didn't think, like, we decided to try big, but we didn't really think we'd get, we didn't think Gretz would have the time <laughs> or Eiserman would have the time. And, but Jack, for Jack Nicholas to come on was, wow. uh, was really cool. You know, you're doing the Zoom things. We didn't, yep. right? You're, I'm running the damn thing and uh, allowing people into the room and, I could see this name. Anybody who knows Zoom, you have the sidebar that says the participants. 
and the strange name kept coming up and but then it would disappear it would come up and disappear and we were 25 minutes we added this down to five minutes for tsn but we were we were getting into the last 10 minutes of the call and i'm texting bob weeks while we're on there going who's this name and he goes that's jack but he can't get it to work oh, come on geez. so finally jack popped on but he couldn't get his camera to work and uh but just you know the where is his face was quite quite something i'm not sure if it showed because he's a pretty stoic guy but he was really emotional somebody ended up actually filming jack while he was on there so we got a little bit of jack's <clears> face <throat> on there but uh it was yeah uh, it was you know it was really cool when we uh hung up that call and i know where's was deeply deeply touched by it so th those things are what make the job fun i thought it was funny your story about uh, bobby Orr. Trying oh. to get him hooked up on Zoom and how you was the same thing. And, you know, yeah, like we I spent two hours, literally two hours like this, and he could see me for the last hour, but he couldn't get his camera working. Oh no. And that was no good for us. And so I was I was I literally looked like this going, I'm so sorry, Bobby. <laughs> like I was it was I was the most stressful night of my life. It's this guy I've admired forever, the greatest defenseman of all time. And I told him Zoom was easy. <laughs> And, and now, <laughs> and, you know, no, any normal superstar you would have on there in any sport would just say, sorry, it's not working. See you later in five minutes. Yeah. And Bobby Orr is there for two hours, no exaggeration, trying to get this thing working. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it, I mean, I'm technologically inept, so uh, I can't imagine these poor guys that are trying to do these things now. James, I got two more questions for you, Timmy. I don't know if you have anything else. No, no, don't want to too too long. Uh, Gord wants to know, and we, we kind of talked about with hockey. Do you think baseball is going to play this year? Do you think they'll get the season underway? Yeah, I think they'll probably figure it out. Yeah. Uh, again, it's a sport where there's not as much contact and such, and they'll probably end up having some sort of half season, maybe all of it down in Florida. Uh, I think they're all going to try. I mean, yeah. there will maybe a point where the logistics that we talked about five minutes, they just decide it's not worth it. The funny thing is, I, I think a lot of fans, I don't know if anybody's done Twitter polls or whatever, but the sense I get from a lot of people is uh, they just want to they just want to throw in the towel and, and start yeah. next year, which is funny from hockey fans who you think would be starving for entertainment. But there's something about the summer and yeah. no fans in the building that I think a lot of people are turned off by the idea. But again, I, I totally understand why the league's trying to do it. There's a lot of money at stake here. And so I, I'm all for it happening. Uh, I, it's not my favorite thing ever. I think it's going to be really weird to watch, but I, I hope it happens in every sport. I hope the Raptors get a chance to make another run. Yeah. Um, all of those things. James, we wrap up every interview with the uh, question, who would you rather have a beer with? Okay, so we give you an option here. We give you three right. options. You so Wayne Gretzky. graphics and everything. This is impressive. I know. This is uh, <laughs> not, not Mickey one. Mouse. <laughs> so first one, who would you rather have a beer with? Wayne Gretzky. Next, option number two is Tiger Woods. Option number three, Bob McKenzie. Who would you rather have a beer with? I got to go Bobby Mack. He's my guy. But Bobby, <laughs> Bobby Mack, Mack would be drinking wine for sure. <laughs> I would, uh, like, Tiger, I think the easy answer would be Tiger, but I just don't think he'd give you, I don't know if he'd give you much. You know what I mean? I it might know. just be one of those quiet, I mean, if he knew it was off the record, maybe I'd choose Tiger because I've been lucky enough to have beers with Gretz and a lot of beers with Bob. <laughs> but, but so I, I'd, I'd easily take Tiger, but I kind of think it would be disappointing that he just wouldn't, you know, it'd be one of these get this yeah. as quickly yeah. as possible. Is Gret Gretzky? We grew up obviously watching Gretzky. He's he's the great one. Yeah, you you would know him on a personal level. We, nobody else gets that opportunity. You said you've had beers with him. Is, is he a good guy? Like, is yeah, he is really good? Yeah, I'm really good. The one thing. Um, I've been impressed with the guys who are special always seem to be good guys. They just kind of get it. And Sid is the same way. I see so much of, you know, the way Sid handles himself with the way Gretz handled himself. And I think he's actually better in some ways when you're sitting having a beer with him because he's just about as regular as, as you could possibly get. Really? And I think, you know, he's about as Canadian as Canadian will be. He's got tons of stories and uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's awesome that way. James, we appreciate it very much. Uh, great talking to you. This is our first face-to-face. -face. Yeah, awesome uh, chatting with you guys. Good to see you, buddy. And uh, uh, I wish I had a beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Get All right, bro. Thanks, All the best, guys. Thank you. Have a Thanks, James. There you go. Oops. And then we cut him off. Uh, that's what we do here. We kicked him off. <laughs> James. Is that good? Professional yeah. right to the end.
Frank Taylor, Taylor, uh, are you going to pick who you're going to have a beer with? Uh, I would have to choose Wainer. I'd have to. I, he's uh, Tiger Wood. Tiger Wood is exactly what I think James said. I think it would probably be like he's just putting in time. I, unless he's like, yeah. he's off the yeah. record. I don't see it. Yeah. Or it's just going to be crazy. Right? Like, yeah. Uh, and, and I couldn't keep up with that. Yeah, let's be uh, honest. That's going to be the safe choice. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I've met Bob McKenzie in passing, like not like we ever had a beer, but uh, I, 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 he's a hockey dude. Like I think he'd be a good guy, but Wainer's Wainer, man. Like, yeah, I think I think McKenzie would be the guy probably because he's got a Margaritaville, and we all know how the Margaritaville goes. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. Do we? <laughs> we could share recipes. Uh, you know, yeah. we, we could talk to him about how that thing works to its capacity. Uh, Have you ever? Have you ever met Walter? Have you ever met Walter Gretzky? No, but I'm going to tell you this funny story I just heard on a Zoom call with the buddies last week. My buddy Nikki Six said he was in Walter Gretzky's basement because he just leaves the door open, and no. his buddy lives next door. So they went in the basement and just took pictures of stuff, and then were <laughs> trying on like souvenir jerseys <laughs> and stuff, and then they leave. And then uh, Walter comes home. They're having a barbecue next door. Walter joins in. And he's like, oh, did you go check it out? I'm like, oh, yeah, we were already down there. Like, oh, good. Yeah, it's go check it out. I don't know if Walter wants it broadcast that his back door is open, but apparently you just walk in like it's a living museum if Walter's home or not. Walter was at an event. I was at a seniors fair of all things. A seniors <laughs> fair. <Picking and>, up or... <laughs> I was the youngest one by 30, 40 years. Yeah. And Walter Gretzky was speaking, and Walter was – he was a party. He was a oh. good dude. Like That's what he, it sounds like. He was – he owned the room. The women loved him. He had stories. He had um, – he, he was doing a speech. Like, he had a stack of papers, but it was a stack. And it wasn't like his speech. It was bits. And he would oh, just nice. pull another paper, and he's like, yes. yep, let's do this I one. That. I love yeah. old man bits. They oh. just pull it out. Like, I'm going to try this and it's going to crush this room right now. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I we'll love it. And I, I, I think Wayne is obviously a little more media savvy. He's contained, right? Like he, uh, you know, he, he comes across. Well, I think Wayne's got a little bit of Walter in him behind closed doors. I could see it. Wait, wait, it came up in the comments. I forgot this part about Walter Gretzky's fridge was just full of McDonald's hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Still in the, in the, in the package. Oh, is, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's just like he had containers of McDonald's hotcakes, which is phenomenal, really. If you're just an old guy, you just load it up and, and uh, you're ready. You got hotcakes. Wayner, he's a Tim Hortons guy, right? Is he doing McDonald's as well? Wayner's a Tim Hortons guy, yeah. Yeah, I wonder he's if he's got got some, Yeah, if he's got some Hopefully kind of deal. not break the contract there. <laughs> Also, for the record here, uh, Cord Bar asked uh, if I like old man bits. The answer is no. Yeah, let's no. 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 All right. All right. We'll, block no. that <laughs> we'll, we'll cut that in post production. Yeah, we'll for sure. Hey, uh, I opened up another beer there in case we, we missed it on the on the uh, podcast. Here? Here. I had a oh, both yes. too. Uh, I also got an online delivery order. That's, that's what we should send James Duthie, is how we can. Hook up with some online ordering. I got a boat yes. here. It's juiced up. Uh, it's delicious, easy drinking. Yeah, uh, love Bose Brewery. Good yeah. beer there. I've got a fridge full, and I'm after we're done here, I'm gonna crack into a flying monkey. Mm. A little. Uh, Which one's that? Freak Show Crush. Whoa, a hazy IPA. Where am I going here? There I we don't go. know. We need to figure out how that. That looks delicious. <laughs> it looks delicious. We have a try. And you know what? I did have earlier too. Uh, shout out to. Uh, the all together. Oh yeah, nice. Over what at, I, uh, what I didn't know about that can is it's the same can for everyone. Like oh, I've seen breweries that have the all together logo, and it's a it's a different. Uh, it's the same beer in a different can. No, it's different beer in the same can. Yeah, same beer. Same different brewery, same can. There we go. Nailed there it. Go. Well, we're up to four beer pie this week. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, James Duffy. That was uh, really really sweet. We do appreciate it. Uh, uh -huh. That yeah, was really cool. Yeah, right? That was really cool. He's a good dude. And I'll tell you the truth. Um, I reached out to him 13 years ago because my boss has said, you got to get somebody. You got to get a name. And who am I? Who am I? How am I going to get a name? 
and I'm watching TSN. I see a guy come on with a monkey. And I thought, oh, let's get the guy with the monkey. And I don't even know how. I got his email, and James will always answer my emails. Uh, and I'll just say, hey, can we talk? Yeah, no problem. And he gives gives himself 15, 20 minutes. Like, he'll he'll just talk, and he's a good dude. So appreciate that. James Duffy over at TSN. Check out his podcast, The Rubber yeah, Boots no, Pod. Yeah, for sure. Freaking hilarious. Hilarious. Matt Drew, hey, cheers. Yes. Oh, Collective Arts. That is oh, good. Yeah, I saw that one come up. The Earl Grey. Uh, Sons of Ken had an Earl Grey beer. I'm looking forward to trying that Collective Arts Earl Grey. It's uh, it's delicious. That's a that's morning great. beer in the summertime. <laughs> that's a, well, it's anytime if you put your mind to it. Mm. Really, Round Maddie, appreciate it. Uh, face for radio, buddy. Uh, we can't wait to see you guys again real soon. Okay. All right, you got anything else there, Timber? That was fun tonight. That was a lot of fun. That was good times. Appreciate good time. it. James Duffy will be back next week for episode number eight. Remember, guys, reach out to us anytime. If you got an idea of a brewery or somebody we can talk to, um, that's the way to do it. Oh, I do have one thing I wanted to mention real quick. This weekend is usually the weekend for the Leukemia Bottle Drive, the bottledrive.ca. It's not happening this year. Um, I'm going to reach out to them to see, because I know a lot of people hold on to their empties for this weekend, to see if there's a way that we can still donate to the cause for the leukemia and lymphoma. Uh, we'll post that on our Facebook page. So yeah, uh, I'll let you know there. Know guys, I'm so Thanks some- for tuning in. Sorry, Timmer. No, I, I know a lot of guys have been saving up for it, and they've been looking for a place to donate. They've been uh, drinking a lot in the last eight, nine weeks, and they want to donate somewhere. So let's uh, figure out how we can make that happen. Bottledrive.ca. We'll let you know more on our Facebook page. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Episode 8 again next week right here on the 3 Beer Pod.